Over the last 10 years, the Department of Radiology at the University of Florida College of Medicine has conducted a simulation-based evaluation of radiology resident competence in critical care imaging. 327 residents interpreted this case of craniocervical junction injury as one of 65 cases during an 8-hour simulated on-call shift, with a median score of 2 out of 10 and an overall average score of 2.32 out of 10. Overall, the average number of points lost out of 10 to observational discipline was 7.68. At the same time, 0.00 points were lost due to interpretive errors on the part of the residents. We define an effective report to be one which achieves scores between 7 and 10. In terms of letter grades, this would be an A or a B. In this most missed case, 6% of residents produce an effective report. We define a report having a critical error to be one with scores between 0 and 2. In terms of letter grades, this would be an F or a D. In this most missed case, 75% of residents produce reports with critical errors. So this eight or nine year old girl came into the emergency room uh, after she was hit by a motor vehicle. And uh, at the outset, I have to say these reformations are a little crude looking because they were done with two millimeter thick sections. We reach back in our archive for this case. Uh, now we do uh, all of our cervical spine imaging with uh, somewhere between um, half a millimeter, millimeter thick sections. So again, the uh, reformations are a little crude. Ever since my residency days at UCLA about 45 years ago, uh, I was taught to look at all radiographs uh, with uh, looking at the plain films first. Not plain films, I'm sorry. Looking at the uh, soft tissues first. And so I do that now, and I've carried that over uh, through my entire career with regard to looking at uh, spine cases. So I always begin with the soft tissues. In this case here, I'm looking at prevertebral soft tissues and the paravertebral soft tissues. And um, here, the prevertebral soft tissue is a little prominent at this level, plus minus at the cranial cervical junction. Of course, you can't really reliably uh, uh, tell whether all the ligamentous structures at the cranial cervical junction are intact. Like you can do a much better uh, job with uh, detailed um, MR imaging. You do a pretty good job of that. But in carrying out that I also then uh, extend that to the epidural space in the, uh, in the uh, spinal canal or cervical spine. And then in this case, I, I carry that uh, along the uh, other uh, areas. And here's a, a density that doesn't belong there. So until proven otherwise, uh, that's blood along the clivus and it's extra axial, which means there's a high likelihood of a cranial cervical junction uh, injury in this patient. And the other thing in looking at this uh, immediately, there's a lot of different lines and things you can draw in these cases to, to pick up um, ligamentous injury in the absence of obvious bony injury. Uh, uh, sometimes it's called a spinal, spinal injury without radiographic findings is another way that this is uh, taught. Uh, but the distance uh, between uh, the clivus and the odontoid here is fine, but if you draw a line through the odontoid and, and then through the uh, clivus, uh, the, the odontoid looks like it's a little too far back. So lots of different lines there. You can go learn about them if you like. They're useful. Um, so uh, we go and, um, and uh, until proven otherwise, uh, the a uh, ADI uh, is normal in this patient, which is a, you know, a standard thing you look at. Uh, but uh, we go then and switch to a multiplanar review of the, um, of the uh, uh, study. And once again, this is, if you draw a line there and there, this is just too far back regardless of anything. I, you, I measured the ADI, it's, it's okay, it's a little prominent, but it's a pretty wide range of normal in this age group. And uh, however then, if you go hunting, more carefully because uh, because you've been tipped off uh, to uh, the possibility of injury at that level by recognizing that uh, extra axial uh, collection of blood, there is an avulsion fracture. And so clearly, uh, you know, without, uh, uh, and, and you have a little asymmetry here between the lateral masses uh, that may or may not be appropriate difference, you know, when the, uh, when the head is turned 
this one can be closer, but this one has to be offset, so this doesn't look quite right either, the, the relationship of the lateral masses to the uh, odontoid. Uh, but that's a chip fracture uh, off uh, one of the uh, ligaments, the uh, alar transverse, that ligament is complex at this level. So this is an extraordinarily important um, uh, case. Obviously, we call the, uh, uh, the team emergently on this, keep the kid immobilized, uh, and uh, get neurosurgery uh, involved. Uh, this case uh, is in this set to emphasize this, this process of uh, uh, injury around the cranial cervical junction, which uh, can be missed in the absence of obvious bony findings, but also to emphasize the process of having an orderly way that you look at either uh, radiographs of the cervical spine uh, and and uh, the bone detail of the cervical spine in an orderly and systematic um, manner. And I would strongly recommend starting with the soft tissues to initiate that discipline in all cases. So this is an uh, emergent case and a need for non-routine communication.